Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Abdurrahman Ayman. I'm an architect. I'm interested in coding and its uses in architecture. And in this YouTube playlist, you will learn how to code some scripts on Rhino Common in order to do whatever geometry you can build using Rhino graphical user interface or uh, grasshoppers graphical user interface and we'll be explaining how to model a lot of geometries and how to do some intersections and a lot of advanced level of coding and its applications on the Rhino and grasshopper using grasshoppers C sharp script so in order to do that you'll need to learn about the Rhino Common API so what is Rhino Common API? Rhino Common API is a library that contains all the classes all the methods and all the functions that you need to learn in order to use to make scripts either using C sharp or Visual Basic or Python. So you'll need to go and search for Rhino Common on Google and you can find the official Rhino Common API website in the first link most probably and if you open this API and I have to say that I'll be assuming that you have a background about coding or scripting in C sharp specifically because in this playlist we'll be scripting and writing codes using the C sharp language. So if you open this Rhino Common API website, you can find a lot of tabs here containing the collection, the application settings, the comments, the display and if you go on you'll find the file input and output you'll find the geometry and the geometry.intersect and a lot of other tabs here and each tab of these have sub tabs the sub tabs contain the classes the and the structs mainly of the Rhino Common library so if you want to deal with files you can head to the rhino.file.io tab and try reading in the lines of these structs and classes in order to let's say archive a file open a file save a file and in this very library you'll be dealing with the .3dm which is the ex extension of a Rhino file and you can find a lot of things you can deal with CSV files you can do a lot a lot of things and what we'll be focusing on in this playlist is the Rhino the geometry so we want to learn how to model geometry on Rhino but instead of using the graphical user interface we'll be coding this geometry so we'll mainly head to the Rhino the geometry tab in this very playlist and maybe we'll explore more tabs uh, in maybe like another level of videos but anyway if you head to the Rhino the Geometry namespace, in this namespace you will find all the child namespaces, which are the Rhino the Geometry collections, the Rhino the Geometry intersect, the mesh refinement, uh, refinements, and the morphs, which are actually namespaces that can be used within the main namespace that is called Rhino the Geometry. So if you want to intersect two geometries you'll need to go to the child namespace rhino geometry.intersect and we'll 
discover this later and we'll deal with it. If you want to start building geometry, you need to go to whatever class or structure that you need to model. So if I want to model an arc, if I open this tab and just wait a second, we'll find the constructors. So how can I construct an arc using the programming language that I'm using actually? You can find the properties of this class or struct, whatever it is, and of course the methods. So the functions that you can do with this object or geometry. And this is very important to read what namespace is my struct under. And in the constructors, all of these constructors are called overloads in programming, which is having the same struct name or constructor but with different arguments. So I can, let's say, build an arc using a circle and a double angle, or I can, I can build it using a circle and an interval, or using a plane radius and an angle radians, or using plane, a point, radius, and angle radians, and so on. So most probably in so many geometries you will find that you can build it using more than one constructor actually and it gives you a lot a lot of power and a lot of ways in order to build your geometry based on whatever geometries other geometries related to it or what your scene includes as geometry in your file and the properties is usually getters or setters. So what is getters or setters? You can get some information or extract some information from my object using, let's say, the object name dot angle. If I do so, I can get the sweep angle for this arc segment. or I can still set this angle. So if I write the arc's name dot angle and say equals let's say uh, 20 uh, or um, I mean 3.14 then it means that I'm setting the angle of this arc. If I want to get or set the center of the arc I can use this property, which is the arc name dot center, and let's if I'm setting it, I can say equals a new point 3D. Or if I want to get it, I'll just type the arc name dot center and just assign this line to an output and it gives me the center of the arc and so on and so forth in the diameter the endpoint the i can learn if the arc is a circle or not i can learn if it's if it is valid or not i can get the length of this arc i can get or set the plane where the arc lies i can get its radius its start angle its start angle in degrees or its start point and when we go to the methods, we can do some functions on our arc. So if I want to get the bounding box that contains this arc, I'll use the bounding box method. If I want to get the closest point, I'll use the closest point method. And we'll find a lot of things. We can get the po a point at the arc using the curve parameter which is called t, or I can get a tangent at a given parameter. I can convert my arc to a NURBS curve in order to get the power of the NURBS curve and the curve class in Rhino Common. 
We can also trans make some transformations to the arc, including translation, including rotation, and scaling, and so on. We learn this. We, we learn in, with some of the Rhino geometry classes and structs in separate videos through this playlist. And we'll try to explain how to use the properties, how to construct some shapes, and geometries and how to use or do some functions with our geometry so it's there's another very important thing if you're aware of programming if you want to do a method it's very important to know if this is a static method because if it's a static method you will have to call the method using the class or the structs name and not an object's name. While if it's not an, an I'm sorry, if it's not a struct method, then you'll need to call the method using the object itself and not the class or the struct's name. And for example, if we click the point at method, we can find here that there's no static keyword written before point 3d point at and in this case to call this very method if i created an arc an object of an arc structure and let's say we named it arc a if we want to find the point at a certain parameter on this arc we we'll need to, to say arc a dot point at and not the name of the struct. So we, we cannot just say arc dot point at. And of course, if you're aware of programming again, you know that the letters case is very, very important. So usually you name a variable using the small case. And the struct here is written in a capital case so if we check the arc again we find that the arc here is written with a capital A here okay so the other thing is we need to find what does the method gives me back what does the method give me back so here we can find that the method of course gives me a point 3d object and it uses this method which is called point at and it requires an argument between the brackets which is a double t which is a parameter or on the curve or the curve parameter and if you find here uh, when you look here at the description you find what does this method do so it gets the point at the given arc parameter and you find the parameters which are which is t which is an arc parameter to evaluate and this is really important the return so what object because this will usually make a lot of misunderstanding or you you will find yourself in the middle of a really big problem because you don't know exactly what does the method return sometimes the methods return a uh, double sometimes it returns a point 3d sometimes it returns an array sometimes it returns a list it could return a lot of variables types or data types so it is really important because if you're going to assign the result of this method to a variable you'll have to to know what type does it return because you need to write the data type because before the object's name so here it says that it gives a point at a given parameter so that it returns a point 3d object and so on and so forth we'll be checking let's say the circle how to create a circle how to create a box how to uh, learn the properties and how we use them what are the methods of each of these structs or classes 
depending. We learn about the B rep, we learn about the circle, as I said, we learn about, let's say, the, of course, the curve class and the surface class, the nerves curve, the nerves surface class, and of course the point 3D which is really really important the start of everything is a point and also the polyline maybe the mm, we can check the sphere how to create a sphere and how to modify it using coding we, uh, the surface is really important of course and as well as the nerve surface and the vector 3D those are the main geometries that will be understanding through this playlist and maybe we'll then start checking the intersection namespace so how can I find an intersection of two circles how can I find curve intersections how can I get the intersection between a lot of things arc and arc, b rep and b rep, b rep plane, circle and circle, and everything you wish for that you can do in Rhino, you can find it here exactly in this website. So let's begin, and I'm looking forward to hear your comments in order to improve the videos and uh, just let me know if there is anything that you prefer to focus on or to add to the videos or to the playlist and I'm happy to be here with you and I hope you learn something really interesting in this course thank you and see you in the next video